How good does this car look as a four-door? It's so obviously a three-series and yet so obviously something special without resorting to silly wings and frills. Power comes from a 3-litre twin-turbocharged straight-six producing 425 horsepower and the important bit, which is 406 foot-pounds from under 2,000 RPM. It may not look like a massive step over the E90 V8, but it's actually way more potent. With its dual-clutch gearbox, BMW claims 0 to 100 miles an hour in under 9 seconds. It weighs 1,595 kilograms. The list of mechanical modifications is so large I've actually posted a separate video of an engineer explaining some of them. You could probably claim that this car was so different to the base car it shouldn't even be called a 3 Series. And that funky blue paintwork is actually a metallic finish. The car we're in is a four-door M3 with the dual-clutch DCT transmission. It's got 19-inch wheels with the Michelin Pilot Sport Cup, Super Sport, whatever you call it, tyre. It's got ceramic brakes. I think that's about it. The interior's got the fancy one-piece seats as well. You can check those out on the options list. So that's what we're in. What's it like to drive? Pretty damn good. Wow. First impressions. I love M3 anyway, but this one... This is spectacular, I think. First impressions on the road. The front axle's got so much grip. Every corner I'm going into, you can just push and push and push. It gives you so much confidence. There's just no understeer at all. And it's not boring either, because you can bring the tail into play whenever you want to with your right foot. But let's start with the controls. Steering, okay. Not full of that stuff that people call feel that I avoid calling feel, but much better than the E92, whose steering was a little bit artificial and frankly didn't give you much information and also was probably a bit too quick. This is nicely judged for speed. It's got three different settings, just like the last two M cars we've driven, M5 and M6. It's got a comfort, a sport and a sport plus setting. Me, I need mean comfort. Sport requires some shoulders. Sport plus is real he-man stuff and I'm not that butch or macho because I'm only five foot seven. Um, so I leave it in comfort. Dampers on the road, we've got Comfort Sport Sport Plus. Comfort, really nice. I find it nicely resolved, takes bumps, quite firm. Car still gives you nice response. Sport, too much for me, but not unusable on the road, certainly. Sport Plus, track. Used it on the road, thought it was horrid. The throttle response, so the engine, three modes again. We've got efficiency, then we've got Sport and Sport Plus. Normally, I like the throttle quite long, but this car, actually, I go for the shorter throttle positions. I think Sport is about right, the one in the middle. So for me, I'd have the car in comfort for chassis, comfort for steering, and I'd have it in the Sport for the throttle. What's it like to have a turbocharged M3? Well, first of all, it makes some odd noises. For the first half an hour, to me, it sounded like a tuned up 335D of the last generation. Under load, it's got a slightly sort of diesel-y six-cylinder noise. Not actually that pleasant, I have to say, but as time goes on, I've become more accustomed to the noise. I actually quite like it. The motor, the motor is a masterpiece. Okay, we've discussed that noise not being quite what you'd expect, but in terms of throttle response for a twin turbocharged three litre six, it, it's just astonishing, absolutely astonishing. It loves to rev, and what's more, when you're in the revs, four to six thousand you could just whap it and it's instantly responsive and it drops revs it just feels normally aspirated to me and then you have all the benefit of the torque low down compared to the e90 series it's so much faster and more effective on the road it just leaves the old car dead mm. and the chassis well i love the balance i'm on dry portuguese road so maybe it's not entirely fair but i love the way it feels so rear driven the front axle feels uncorrupted you don't have to drive it like a complete lunatic, but if you turn the traction control half off, you can just feel it squirm on the exit of turns. It's just so rewarding. This, initial impressions, is a great M car on the road. A great package. It's quite compact, it's not too big, yet it's comfortable, usable, and it's exciting as well. I think it, it moves the game massively on from the last car. <laughs> We don't actually need to shoot a link piece between the road section that we've just shot and the track section that we're about to shoot, but 
there's something in my inner car enthusiast contract that tells me if there is an M3 Sport Evolution E30 parked somewhere, I have to stand by it with a camera. So I'm doing that now. That's a Sport Evolution, and I'm going to go and lick it. E36, what colour is that? What colour is that? It's a yellow, it's not Phoenix, it's Dakar yellow. Remember that, Dakar yellow. That's a beautiful E46 on 18s, but it's got the wrong gearbox because it's got these paddles behind the steering. We don't like those much. E92, lovely engine, perhaps not the best all round package. And then there's the new one. Not a bad family history, is it? Not a bad family history. Take a peer back. I'd like one of all of those. Hmm. I'm just going to spank the new one. This is Portimao Circuit, a great place to drive any car, but particularly a street-based car because it's big and it's open, it's got gradient, you can really use the performance. The car I'm in is an M3, that makes it a saloon, it's the one we had yesterday, so it's got carbon ceramics, 19-inch wheels, optional adaptive dampers, and it is really good. When you're taking a streetcar and putting it onto a circuit, two things you need is brakes and tyres. Not traditionally BMW M's strongest suit. Normally the brakes are made of butter, but that seems to be a thing of the past. These ceramics have been pounding around here for a few laps and they're absolutely fine. What do I like about this car? First of all, stand out for me, the car turns in beautifully for something that's, again, a road car, but it's the rear axle location. That solid mounting means I've just got such a connection between my right foot and the back axle of the car. That, for me, is the elixir of motoring. I love it. It's why I love the fact that M cars are still rear wheel drive. Yes, on a rainy day in the UK, it's not going to be the easiest thing, but for these moments, it's just stupendous. The tyre, that Michelin Supersport, great bit of work. Special Aramid belt construction, all sorts going on, a special compound. The net effect is we've got a lovely amount of front end grip when we turn the car in. The grip then builds down the side of the car there beautifully and if I want to just oversteer it a little bit, I can. I've got that control. So the grip's nicely balanced down the side of the car. Steering, it's just so accurate, I can put it exactly where I want to. Strangely on the track, I've still got it in comfort because I just prefer it that way. Engine, it pulls. It really pulls, torques amazing from three to about six, and for me, it's still worth extending out. I love the engine. The noise, well, what do you think? For me, it sounded like a 335D initially, but you get a bit more noise in the Sport Plus mode, and that sounds pretty damn good to me. Not as good as the old V8, but still, it's a good noise. In standard, mode with the traction control on, there's quite a lot of assistance, it comes in too much for me, it interferes. In MDM, sort of halfway traction control, it'll allow quite a bit of a slide. In fact, BMW M say it will allow the car to spin, there's so much leeway. Um, but really, you just gotta, you just gotta turn it all off, boys. You gotta turn it all off, and you gotta wreck some tyres. That's what M cars are all about, isn't it? <laughs> it's got so much balance, you know? I was talking to an engineer earlier and he had a slight glint in his eye because the fact is BMW have got drivers that do this all day long. They do it, they test it, not because it's relevant, but because they know an M car should have this feel. But if you take handling characteristics that allow you to just nonchalantly pull shapes like that, you're going to end up with a car that's got a handling balance in normal conditions that you're really going to enjoy. It's just superb. Here we can just back it in, bring it a bit of throttle, and just ride it out. Sensational. And of course the torque means that this is even more of a drift weapon than the E92 itself. Quite handy, it's slithering around. This circuit is just ace. You have such a good sense of connection in this car. big and it's not clever but I mean these cars are just designed to do it aren't they they're just designed to do it 
Oh, this is the long one. This could go on some time. This could go on some time. I'm sorry about that. I'm sorry about it, but you just got to do it. <laughs> I'll take a saloon in blue with the DCT gearbox, the 19 inch wheels, the adaptive dampers and the ceramic brakes. I'll take it around June, July time. That'll kind of do me. Thank you.